Hi, everyone. I'm Harley Salbaca. And I'm Anthony Morrow. And today we're thrilled to have with us the famed screenwriter, Mattson Tomlin, and the award-winning and New York Times best-selling artist, Lee Bermejo, the visionaries behind the critically acclaimed comic book series, A Vicious Circle. So that's one of the reasons we were like extra excited about this, because we were like, oh my gosh, it's a boom time travel book, which means we could actually have an entire episode just dedicated to time travel. Love yeah. that. So uh, favorite time travel stories, period, like movie, TV, and books. Uh, Max in. I mean, you know what? I think that one that I just, I really love and just continues to occupy kind of a, a soft spot in, in my heart is Looper. Um, and I, I think that part of the yes. reason for that is that, so I was at uh, film school when Looper came out. It was, it was 2012. And it was just kind of this like, oh yeah, like we can still make this movie. Like we can still just make like the run and gun awesome, like $30 million movie that it doesn't turn into a whole CGI fest. And it's just like, here's some characters, here's a story, like get into it. And I, my my favorite sequence in, in Looper, just because of how audacious it is, is when you have the Joseph Gordon-Levitt character successfully kill his older self. And then we start to walk through time and it's like one year later, two years later, five years mm -hmm. later, and it just does this yeah. thing. And you're like, Oh man, like he's doing this. Like he's yeah. just going for it. I love that because of just kind of what it was and what it said about the film industry. And then the, just the fact that like, there's some really fun writing in that movie. I'm going to go for an eighties cut. Do it. And yes. just say the Terminator because yeah. yeah, it was one of those movies kind of like road warrior where I had, been familiar with the movie just by the VHS cover that you would see in your VHS rental place. And it was just both of those movies were like, I've got to find a way to see these movies. And um, so just the context of getting to see an animated movie at that, at that point in time was, was already exciting, you know, but what I wasn't, what my little brain wasn't prepared for was kind of the, the time travel nature of that movie. I mean, you, 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 I, I definitely wasn't expecting that. And um, I also think that it made such a huge impression on me, just the photography of the film, because yeah. it's so good. Mm. Like, I don't think people know how good that movie is in terms of just the photography of it. It's like a neo, it is the neo-noir kind of, template you know yeah, like yeah. In blade runner is sure. another thing like that's like neo-noir but you know at its i think perfection yeah on steroids yeah yeah <laughs> and, it, and it's just so good and and I, i've probably seen the movie i don't know 50 times i mean you know it's it's yeah. like one of those movies that i can always watch well and in a lot of ways they film that movie like a horror movie too i mean the other thing about the time travel in the terminator is it's like one of the, the, the great cinematic examples of time travel being sad. Yep. In yeah. That, like, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like you get to the stuff where like they're underneath the bridge and it's like uh, Kyle and Sarah talking in like this, this like very eighties and like the best way moon, like moonlit set. And he's just talking and he's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's one way back. It's like, either it's a one way ticket and that's it. And she just kind of realizes like, man, like this guy is just like out there. Like he's just out there by himself and he just put himself there. And then when she realizes that he kind of did it for her, it's just kind of like the, the sweeping romance of the time travel and like the act of going back in time, having such emotional stakes to it. It's like, it's, it's such an undervalued part of, time travel in general but also that movie of just like oh man like like to travel back in time is to break a heart like i just i, I love that about that movie i i, I can i change my answer i want to say <laughs> i feel like this actually ties exactly into talking about a vicious circle um so how did you guys come up with this idea for this epic sci-fi adventure about two men who are cursed battling through time and space with this whole cycle of violence and revenge, like what was the creative process for that for you? Looking back on it, just kind of like creative lightning striking, uh, I think is the way that we we could put it and would feel kind of correct um, because we arrived at it so quickly and definitively as, you know, we 
we started wow. talking, we, we were fans of each other and we, we hung out on, on Skype. And in that first Skype, it's like, we're meeting for the first time and just kind of like, Hey, like seen stuff that you've done, like, think that you're cool. You want to be friends? Like we were doing that. And within, within That's really cute. minutes, we're like, we should, we should talk about doing something together. And we, we, we talked about this, this a Korean film that we both love called I saw the devil that is just, it's so hardcore and it's, it's like one of the great revenge films of the last 25 years. And we were both like, Ooh, like that really has teeth. Like that's really like, let's do something like that. And then it was kind of off of that, that I'm travel started to come up. And then you pitched like it's time travel, but it's the, the mechanism is that someone you know, has to be killed in order for these characters to jump through time. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But the, the only, the, like the, the, the thing I contributed was the style changes, but the high concept was really, Matson had these kind of two or three ideas. And this high concept to me was just like, there we go. I, it just clicked with me because it felt like, that mechanism alone just felt so strong. Like you could anchor so many different kinds of stories around that, but just the immediate ramifications that it had on the nature of violence and like the responsibility mm. of violence and the, the kind of weight of it all. I thought Ooh, that's already thematically something that really like, sp speaks to me, you know? Well, it, it is, it is like that Terminator thing of like time travel is sad, not to, knock anything but it's not just like getting your delorean and like cruise around like it it is this thing of oh like if i'm gonna and you know there there are moments of this the the foundation of the book being like you killed my son but then then after that in the second book there's there's stuff like being in nazi germany and like i can get myself out of this situation but it's going to come at a cost to these people who have just taken care of me and i i think that for both of us it was there's this really exciting component of the idea of just like Oh, every time they make this jump, that is this wish fulfillment for like, what's the new style? What's the new thing? And as a, as a reader, as an audience member, you're leaning in going, I want to see more. I want to see more, but it also comes with that underlayer of people are fucking dying every yeah. single time. It's, it's, it's like a monkey's paw for the reader. It's a little bit yeah. uh, where it's very much just like cool, but also like, Ooh, and it's very much like what's, what's, you know, what's our main character's lives weighed against the lives of everybody else. Watching him having to make these decisions over and over again is like, God, it's like just like stabbing you in the heart every time. Thank you. Yeah. That's what you want, right? From art and from anything that you read, you want to have emotional reactions. Wow. Do I have emotional reactions? Like we talked about this too, our, our one of our first conversations uh, in kind of a roundabout way. I like the fact that if you're going to do comics, I feel like, you know, Matson's, you know, he's a, he's written comics, but he mainly comes from the world of film. But I feel like if you're going to do comics, you should do comics and the, and flex in the way that comics can kind of let you flex. And, yeah. and, mm. and that's kind of the, the, the why of, of the, the style change thing, but you just wanted to have like the emotional reaction as well because without that it's just you know it's just lee a vicious circle is absolutely like the biggest <laughs> flex i think you've ever you've ever done uh in your comics work it's it's beautiful it's sweeping it's just the endeavor to make every time period visually distinct and paying homage mm -hmm. to like the time periods of comics that's come before it, it's truly <laughs> Truly an incredible feat. Part of my job here, I was pitching it to somebody and I was like, I just went to one of the pages where like you had like three sections where each section was a different time period. So it was a different style. And they just were like, is that the same artist? And I was like, yeah, it's the same artist. I'm curious what your inspiration was for each time period, like and how you chose that specific art style for each different time period. Because again, every time we could jump through time, it changes completely color scheme, style, all of it. But where was it that you pulled your information, like your inspiration for each one of those? I think we talked a little bit at the beginning about some possibilities and it was kind of, you know, what might look cool for some, some different scenes. Um, I remember, you know, what some of the first conversations were about for opening scenes should definitely be in black and white. And it, it's kind of this wizard of Oz kind of thing where you all of a sudden 
when things oh. kick into gear, they really like kick into gear. Um, but it's just uh, as usual as a conversation, you know, with, with Matson, cause it all starts with the scripts. And I think that the script alone kind of points you in ways that you can, that you can go. But at the end of the day, it comes down to kind of me versus me. When we're talking about going to, you know, the Cretaceous or Jurassic or whatever it is and dinosaurs, I was like, oh yeah, I'll do that like Frazetta. And then you actually get into the book and you're like, what are you thinking? <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that easy. Yeah. There's no way I can't do Frazetta. So then it becomes me kind of like Babe Ruthing it, but only like getting to like second base. You know what I mean? Like I, I kind of like have these big ideas and then I but up against kind of my own limitations. And so you wind up with what you wind up with. Like the World War II stuff is very John Paul Leone, or at least mm-hmm. that was, mm-hmm. oh, I, like I said, it's tough to go like, I'm going to do John Paul Leon. And you, you like, you don't come close, but that's the, the that's where everything <laughs> kind of starts. And then it just winds up being what, what, it, what it is at the end of the day. But a lot of it's just, you know, what art do I like? What, what makes me what connects me with the story in that way, but what also makes me like the little 14 year old who (laughs) was looking at all these different artists thinking, wouldn't it be great to draw like this guy or, or, or this guy. So I guess. I don't, I don't think your limitations show in this book and no one will know unless they listen to this podcast. (laughs) Oh, they they do. Ask Matson about the, uh, the, the crisis of the first issue, you know, I, I had a moment, the first issue where it, <laughs> he, no, he I mean, yeah, it, 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 the thing I'll say about that is that like, I, I think that there's your point of view and your point of view is your point of view. And then there's everybody else's and to everybody else's point of view, including mine, it is effortless. And I'm, I'm kind of the, the, the second closest person to your process in this book. And so I, I know some things and I know that it's not effortless. I know that you, you are climbing Mount Everest, but also like you're climbing and you're not falling off the cliff either. And so there is this kind of amazing uh, experience that I have in that Lee and I will, will, will call or will text. And uh, there, there were times in the first book, especially where it was just like pain. Like it was just like, I think that's really the word to use. Like <laughs> you, you were just in pain. And then at the, at the end, it's just kind of like, this is magic. Like this is a, this is a literal wizard who's, who's, who's making something that most people just could not do. And yeah, I, I think that, you know, for, for me, one of the things that I realized about what Lee is doing here is that uh, I like, I can think about it in terms of music. And it's, it's almost like somebody who is a, is a successful recording artist who has their style and everybody knows like th- that's their voice and that's what they sing, suddenly changing genres and suddenly just like singing in a completely different way. And I think that what I love is that it's still Lee. It's like through, through all of these different styles, like I can still see Lee in there. And yet like he is stretching himself to such a, a crazy degree that it's also you look at it and you go is this the same guy? So it's, it, it's this kind of balancing act where like, I, I just feel so lucky to, to get to be in the, the presence of it. Not, not, not let alone having written and had something to do with it. Cause it's man, what you do is just uh, have it's, something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it was a bit more drastic. I think I was expecting it to be a bit more drastic, but now that we're kind of two issues into it, like the best thing that I can do is hope that, whenever I do it, number one, I don't lose the reader, but number two, it's like there are moments of the story that when I read it lettered, I really go, Oh, these words have to be really important. Like this, this phrase or this, you know, like, because what one thing that Matson is doing here that I don't think a lot of people have really commented on, but should be mentioned is that he is minimalizing a lot. Like there is some stuff in the story that is incredibly minimal and very kind of essential. And that 
it, that nature of that makes it like this, like people have to pay attention to this, you know, these three words or whatever he's saying here. And like, if the style isn't helping me or helping reader get there and have that mm. impact, that moment be what it should be, then it's, kind of, then it's kind of like, okay, cool. I changed my, I cross-hashed a lot. <laughs> but like, you know, it has to be, it has to have like a greater purpose. And, and so like the only way to know that really is to see it lettered and, you know, see what Becca's bringing to the table, which I think is great. But like see that whole product come together and then, you know, you, you kind of just hope you, you jumped off the clip, you know, with a parachute, I guess. Before we get going, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the dichotomy between uh, Ferris and Thacker. Uh, mm -hmm. Lee, you you had said something that just kind of spurred that in my mind earlier, where it was like kind of you finding yourself drawing this book, where Ferris and Thacker very much seem like two sides of the same coin in a lot 100%. of ways. How were those two characters your way into the story and kind of what do they represent? I think that one of the things that was really critical for us in, in being able to stick the landing here is that we had the whole story kind of from go. And so it wasn't uh, what, who are the, like, we kind of knew who they were, what they were all about and how, you know, these, these both, as we, as we learn in, in the second chapter, these guys are both kind of like these hardcore assassins. It's like, that's, that's kind of what they are. And we're going to find out where each one is from and what their specific deal is, what their domestic lives were. Like all of that is going to end up being revealed and they're going to be on, on some hands striking differences. And then also a lot of similarities and, the most striking difference of all is really how these two guys think of themselves and who they think that they are. And I think that I don't want to get too far into it because so much of that is kind of what's unearthed in the third book where we are going to learn a lot about Ferris and he's going to finally kind of. Oh, no. I saw it happen and I was like, in time, I'm by myself. Right? I just did some time traveling. Uh, so anyway, uh, long, long story short, I, I think to be able to take that kind of mythic uh, assassin character that we all, you know, it's the, the whole John Wick thing and to kind of cut them in two. And so make it two characters who feel two very different ways about the same thing and then have them really go at each other and have that be the conflict, uh, you know, character informs story in this way that I, I think that by the time you get to the third book, uh, hopefully people will look at it and they'll go on the one hand here, here was this incredible ride where, where, where Lee has really done all of this like magic on the page to, to take us through the universe. And then meanwhile, there will also be a character story where you really end up feeling like, okay, wow. Like I've, I've really had to think about some things as far as violence and as far as consequence and as far as choices that people make and about your past running back into you and like, guilt and all like all of those kind of great awesome mm -hmm. themes that, that drive story no idea what i just said but it, <laughs> it was brilliant so great we have it recorded all right lee madsen thank you so much for joining us today you've both been sincerely fantastic and we're so excited to see what's going to come in the final issue of this is a vicious circle uh please tell the good people of the internet where they can find you you can find me at madsen tomlin on all the places I'm on one place. Um, what is my username? Uh, Libra Mayo Art on Instagram. Yeah. Perfect. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is my username? <laughs> um, thank you to everyone listening. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you pick up the first two issues of A Vicious Circle at your local comic book shop. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to catch the full length episode in podcast form as well. Uh, if you want to stay up to date on all the cool things we have come down the pipeline for Boom Direct, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast and follow Boom Studios on all social media platforms. There are about a million of them now, and I think we are on all of them. And more counting. So follow us on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, comics are for everyone. Which is why we make comics for everyone. I'm Anthony Morrow. I'm Harley Salbaca, and this is Boom Direct. Boom Direct. Nailed it. We need to have a new ending. We need yeah, a new one. We can't we can't ever time that correctly. We can't. 
And like, I'm not, I'm an awkward winker.